Hello everyone and welcome to the Imperial Holonet. I am JID123 and I am joined by Red Leader and Tilly's Deadpool Villa and Dr. Holocron. And today we are doing something called Spoiler Speculation for Star Wars Episode 9, Title to TBA. Um, Spoiler Speculation is essentially we are going to speculate about Episode 9, but we are going to use the basis of various rumors, spoilers, and other things as our means of discussion. Like 90% of other Star Wars channels. Exactly, because <laughs> we don't believe in originality on this channel. Um, we got to bring in the big bucks eventually. Uh, so, to begin, we all have the doc in question, I hope, for the spoilers. You do have the doc in question. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> give, him the, give him the doc. Exactly. Uh, but in all <laughs> seriousness, it's in the chat room if you want to look up the, the photo. Uh, which will be our first part of the discussion. So, so if Doc is being a Doc, would that mean that he's currently docking? What? Yes. <laughs> no, you don't want to know. Hey, you, know, <laughs> you know how hard it is to dock? A big doc. <laughs> I mean, I hope so. There's a lot of ships involved. And oh, know. no, docking means something very different. Don't look it up. I don't think I want to. Um... <laughs> Okay, but anywho, so our first big actual concrete spoiler we have is a photo that was posted on Reddit a couple weeks ago, and it is very... Oh, wait, we should say, like, full, we're going full spoilers. Yes. And so... leaks. Some oh, yeah. Stuff completely... It's in the video title. <laughs> yes. I, I know, but just for the reference of this is straight up stuff <coughs> that has actually been... Leaked. Not just rumors or suggestions, but like actual set photos and right uh, shit that was photographed on somewhere else, not directly on set. But you know what I mean. So uh, if you want to go in clean, not supposed to know this stuff. Yeah. So if you want to be clean, go now. I always feel like a drug dealer every time I have like spoilers, and I want to give share to the people like, hey. Want some hey spoilers? kids, you want uh, want some spoilers? <laughs> yeah, like I got some spoilers under this jacket. Um. <laughs> also, uh, I swear I'm not flashing you, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um. But now back to business. We have here various concept art and um still images of the characters and some aliens. So we'll just go over. Uh, Deadpool Villa, do you see the picture? Um, I know. You want me to? copy and paste it into the chat for you? No, I've seen the picture you're talking about. Okay. So, um, I'll go through the, the ones that are a little not as important quick. So we got A, we got a new alien, a small little dude, looks like something out of Jack Koo, maybe. Got some, mm. uh, B, we got, um, a, we got a new joy called, that will annoy BB-8, apparently. Um, from what I heard, it's gonna be like almost like a mother hen kind of relationship. She thinks BB-8 <laughs> is mommy, which I hope so that's true because that sounds adorable. <laughs> but C, ooh, she's a big one. C is Richard E. Grant's character, and he is a first order officer. Ooh, As we expected. I thought it was gonna be Obi. I almost had it for that Obi Wan rumor for a few seconds. <laughs> um. But no, he's very astute and imperious. Um, I kind of hope this is a hint at the whole old school imps hating on the new generation. Only because I, because ever since Captain Candy died, there's a Captain Candy hole in my heart too. And I don't know if PV's coming back because I really want PV. Like I want him, PV, and all the old generation just like give Huck some new ones. Just feel free to comment, people, if you have anything you want to say. Yeah. My thing with um, Grant's character design is, like, he obviously looks like he want, they're going to try to make him the new Tarkin. Yeah. He is a Tarkin. <laughs> yeah. I kind of hope I that. I hope so. I would love to see, like, the Tarkins and the Huxes is fighting. What uh, if it was actually... Well, I'm not saying, like, he is a relative of Tarkin. I'm, I'm, think, I'm saying, like, he's a tarkin S character. Like, he's the Tarkin villain. Yeah. Oh, it would be cool. Uh, maybe, I mean, he could be, like, I mean, I, we have some information about Tarkin's extended family from, like, the Tarkin novel and stuff, so I don't know if it could be one of them. Uh, we know he had a few cousins and stuff. Well, Tarkin was an only child. Yeah. 
I'm th I'm thinking more maybe Tarkin had to um spread his gene pool to keep the family name going. Would he be too old to be Tarkin's son? Richard E. Grant is like in his sixties, I think. So. Actually, that's not too far away. Yeah. If Tarkin had a kid when he was like twenty or thirty, it makes perfect sense. <clears throat> Tarkin was like in. Well, Hold on, we're, what, 50 years away from, uh, like, Attack of the Clones. Tarkin's, like, 30 at that point. That mm. that makes sense perfectly. Hmm. Gee, he could be a Tarkin uh, heir. Uh, I mean, he could have had a kid as late as just 30 years prior, mm. all the way back. So that's a lot of wiggle room. Yeah. How how old? Let's use Ray Sloan. Like how old was Sloan when after in the Return of the Jedi hit? Do we have like, uh, like middle aged? I don't know, like forty five. I was gonna say like I thought she was at least in her late thirties. Yeah, I mean she she's graying. <clears throat> I mean, hey, the stress of the power do that to you. Um, but yeah, well, I think she was by that point. So yeah, that's... no one, no one went to Endor thinking shit was gonna go down. We thought it was gonna be easy breeze. I mean, if he did turn out to be Tarkin's son, it would be kind of weird if he was never brought up before until this point. But what if? Well, I could, I could buy Tarkin not mentioning his son, especially if he like had it outside of a marriage or something, because he would, he seems like that kind of asshole who would not bring up a bastard child battle yeah. of the b um, words that's actually a game of thrones e title even if he was why would what he need to have been mentioned at a previous point mm -hmm. i mean it's not like where would it fit in a new hope for him to be like pulling out his wallet and showing everyone pictures of his son the meeting room <laughs> clearly not that type of guy. <laughs> the meeting room clearly He's, he, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, Although, also, another thing I, I noticed technically is in canon, but in um, from a certain point of view, there's also that hint that Tarkin could possibly be gay. So Yeah, well, but... You can, st you can still adopt. Oh, or yeah. you could still have a biological child. And that is so vague. It's a rumor that is hypothetically about Tarkin, but could be about anyone. Mm -hmm. And it's another thing that's already non-canon. And yeah. just, I, I, Tarkin, yeah. Tarkin fucked, like, a lot. Well, yeah. No, no, Tarkin, no, Tarkin has, 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 Tarkin has spread his uh, imperial seed across the galaxy. Mm -hmm. Tarkin the Doctrine has indoctrinated and inseminated all worlds of the Empire. <laughs> oh, you were, you were dying to use that, weren't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I believe half uh, of Coruscant is either a Palpatine or a Tarkin. Let's, let's be real here, people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, so what was I going to say? I, I think that if this guy, if E. Grant's character is a Tarkin, um, it would be kind of fun to see like, okay, Hux is really like, he screwed the pooch and, and, um, he, and now, uh, Kylo, uh, Kylo has called in him, not only just because, hey, I'm tired of Hux's shit, but also like that whole Imperial worship stuff, like, oh, I'm working with the son or whoever, of the guy of my grandfather, who was like the closest confidant to him. Mm. That would be kind of cool if we if we go with the young Tar with the Tarkin heir idea of Tarkin kind of like my, my grandpa used to work for you, where your dad. I'm going to work with you because I want to be like my grandpa. Um, what also would be kind of neat if this again is going by. Uh, if we're going by Tarkin's son, is that it would be kind of interesting to see how. Um, like, I'm trying to put this into words. Like, um, his yeah, legacy. Like, how, yeah, how is that? Um, how is that Tarkin legacy pulled up? And also, like, it, how much of his father is he like? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, Richard E. Grant has a fair amount of similarities to, um, uh, Peter Cushing physically, but um, in terms of his acting ability, I could definitely see him, you know, pulling off that same kind of Peter Cushing vibe and just kind of general presence. Uh, it'd be cool to um, maybe even have like 
I don't know if he'll be necessarily going against Hux or Kylo, um, but um, it'd be cool if we had a similar situation between him and someone else that we had with Tarkin and Krennic and Rogue One in a way. Yeah, like it. Okay, ahead. Probably be bitch slapping Hux around though. <laughs> yeah, and, and regardless of you know, we've talked about the whole first order of stormtrooper rebellion thing. I do think though there will be a lot of backstabbing in the first order ranks this episode. Like I could see a combination of the first order falling by just resistance will, but all of them just backstabbing each other because that's what bad guys do. Mm. Um. As I don't think we have any, unless anything else has to say about Richard E. Grant, we'll go to D, Resistance Soldiers. Very nice looking. I like this concept art. I like the Alderanian helmet kind of mm -hmm. thing going on here. Dude, um, it looks a lot like the uh, helmets from Phoenix Group, which are themselves uh, Old Republic helmets. A little like, bit, that'd be cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, the way he's designed, I don't know if this is intentional or not, but uh, in the in the Force back from Force Awakens, we have that brief moment where Kylo, I think, stabs a guy through the chest, and he kind of had a similar hat on to this guy. No, but... that hat was distinctly different. That was actually reused later okay. uh, as well in Rogue One. Everyone's been trying to look into that, and uh, that was just, you know, they, they reuse costumes and shit it doesn't necessarily mean anything and that that is distinctly like almost uh kind of a stereotypical japanese kind of thing like the big brimmed hat mm -hmm. this is you know like doesn't go forward really much at all it's mm -hmm. sloped downwards it reminds me of those it British... is only similar in that it is a hat it reminds me a little more of those British hats you see, like, you know, like, uh, the explorers in Africa kind of thing. That, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Especially because we know they're in, like, some sort of desert area. Right. Um, so, E, we finally see, big spoiler here, Dominic Monaghan's character. Resistance. Well, hold on, I have oh. thoughts, though, on the, oh, uh, sorry. trooper. So, <laughs> with the, uh, the trooper, it's like... I've been waiting for them to finally get a standard resistance uh, trooper design. And previously, we had the guys with the uh, kind of generic-looking helmets, and everyone kind of has those green, like, jumpsuits that don't look like armor. And then you have the guys who have the same thing but are heavies, so they have those actually pretty decent helmets with the orange... Uh, face mask. But I, I I wish those guys would get some actual screen time and get to fire a blaster. <laughs> uh, so I hope these are like scout kind of troopers. But hey, if the Resistance is finally doing some fucking shit, that'd be nice. <laughs> Speaking of more Resistance, Dominic Monaghan, Resistance officer. So he's not a Knight of Ren, folks. Sorry. Um... I mean, he could be a spy. You never know. I mean, you never know. There could be some oh, Or, yeah, but he, we don't we don't know necessarily what happens. I mean, For all we depending know, on who the depending on who the Knights of Ren are, sure. you know, if they are Luke's former students, right. I I still think there's a very good chance one of them would be a traitor. Heck, for all we know, Richard E. Grant could be a resistance spy. Um, I've heard that room. I've heard that guess. Um, I mean, that'd be really unexpected because he's known for playing villains usually. Well, that's kind of the point. Yeah. It's almost yeah. like actors perform. Yeah. Um, I, think yeah, I, I think heard it's like their job, you know? <laughs> um, I bet... Uh, get paid for. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll stop. Okay. <laughs> I, I've, I've, I've had some guesses about him interacting with Connix and Rose, only because Dominic Monaghan posted some pictures of him and, and um, KMT and, you know... Um, Oh, shit. Philly Lord. Philly Lord together. I mean, that could just be for fun. You know, they were all together, so yay. Um, I don't know if it's just me, but the way uh, Dominic Monaghan looks in this picture, he kind of reminds me of Kyle Katarn a little bit. I don't know if it's just me, but he's kind of got that whole, like, kind of, like, bearded kind of look to him. Disheveled, ruggedly handsome. Yeah. 
Mary is Kyle Katarn confirmed. Um, <laughs> just kidding, folks. Um, if anyone else has anything about Dominic Monaghan? Uh, I think he's on the same planet as <coughs> Poe and Finn. Because I, I think he's dressed somewhat similar to Finn is. Yeah. And the other guys, like, I think those Earth Tones, whatever planet they're on, which I don't think it's the possibly Tatooine planet that was that's being shot in Jordan. I think this is a different place. The one that we saw those, uh, the new uh, space horses. Isn't my Naomi Aki also in that picture of hers? Which picture? The, the, the one with the space horses? Or that's someone else? Uh, uh, um, There's a female uh, there too. There's someone. <laughs> that's a weird way to put There's that. There's a woman there too. And I'm not sure if that's Naomi Aki or not. Uh, I'll, I'll look into it. Uh, but no, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, they all have that sort of adventurous kind of tone to it. Um, and I'm sure these are just like one photo. Like, I'm sure there might be costume changes throughout the film. Maybe. Um. For all we know, they might not start out looking like this. Hmm. I want Richard E. Grant to have 20 different costume changes throughout the film. Each uniform more insane. He's the Lando of the first one. Exactly. Each uniform more insane than the last. Um, now, he's the Elton John of the First Order. That would be awesome. First Order needs its own Elton John. Um, playing the piano. Um, singing songs. Uh, okay, yeah, there we go. That's the, uh, we have the photo here on the, our, on Yeah, our... so I don't know if, uh, are you gonna put the photos up? Um, do I want to do that? Um, I don't know, I, I might want to avoid that for copyright reasons. I, I don't think they copyright. How about I uh, put them in the, in the, in the description? To show all the rest uh, of the photos. We should timestamp them then. Uh, but here, here, here's a close up. Because, I mean, this is a very visual video. Uh, mm -hmm. But is that Naomi Aki? I'm not familiar enough with her to know. Um, I don't with our close ups. I don't know. It's hard to say. All I, I mean, what would that image really tell us about any of that? That they're in, like, a very rugged area and looks like they got a... She seems to be maybe more from there, given her garb. Heard... Now, that tells us a decent amount. Or, or I... she seems to be wearing bandages. <laughs> so that definitely, that, that is information. Yeah, I, I think that's probably what's going on. I can't wait to see what those space horses, by the way, look like when we when we're all in the when they're you know the CGI stuff in. Um, they look so cute already. Um, anyone else has anything about Dominic Monaghan? No. Okay, so F is just a new alien. Who so kind of looks like the Knights of Ren? Yeah. yeah. One of them from the concept art. And also a bit like Embo. Not again. In that he has a hat. Yes. <laughs> hey, hats make the man or the alien. Um. Yeah, but I like this. I like these designs. Cool. Um. We got here a new Moncala, a young Moncala, Akbar's grandson. I'm just kidding. Um. I like the. I like the sort of got more of a light pink design here. I have no idea what he's holding. What's this little? The, the, these are reference photos. I know, it's like, what's that, that's a, that, that, I don't think uh, all of these, if any of, if many of them, are actual photos. That's true. Um, that, that's, that is a paint swap. Oh. Penny. Okay, that's what that is. It's like what you get at, uh, like, Home Depot, in order to see what paint you want on your wall. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, these are the kinds of images you'd find, like, a sticker book or something. Well, I mean, they're they're straight up reference photos. I would like some of these as stickers. Um, put Richard E. Grant on the wall. Um, H, we have Ray wearing white in her new outfit. I really like it. It reminds me so much of Padme. Um, 
got that Attack of the Clones Padme look here. Um, and she still has her little wristbands, and I like the little band-aid she had because of probably the Praetorian Guard gave her a very nasty cut. Hmm. Um, anyway. It almost looks like pajamas. Yeah, you gotta dress simple. She, she's, a, she's, a, she's a girl of the, the land of Jack Koo. Um, anyone want to say anything about Ray? I, I feel like it's a bit of a step backwards. Maybe. I don't know where she's going with her character. Um. I mean, her last Jedi outfit was so cool looking that, I mean, it's going to be kind of hard to top that, you know? Yeah, so keep it or try at least. I don't know how I feel about going back to, uh, Kind of just a white version of what the previous costume was. Maybe they're trying to emulate her Force Awakens look a little more. I mean, that, that's what, what I'm saying, but... Maybe it's like to show she's pure, white, pure, goodness, hero. Or maybe those just actually are her pajamas. Ray didn't want to get up this morning. <laughs> um, so now, we're going to white to black. With Kylo. He's sporting here the episode 8 costume, but with the hood in the cape. Uh, I don't think it... Is it the episode 8 costume? Very similar. It's something very similar looking, though. It, I mean, it doesn't have the, the scarf. I don't think... Well, no, the scarf is from episode 7. Uh, but but it, it sort of has the whole shawl. The cape is definitely not the one from before. And again, if this is a reference photo, that would make sense to why the shawl's not there uh, if it's just something like that's a mock-up. But the big thing is this has that... Uh, well, it's so low quality. It looks more like the episode 8 photo, I think. The, that, that photo outfit. Than... Um, than... Um, Hold on, I, 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 it's the waist that I'm, okay, yeah, so he has the... Suit? I don't know what they call it, a suit shirt. Well, hold on, so... He has the thing around the waist in both versions, but... If I'm remembering... Episode 7 had more of a dress-like thing going on. Here you can see his yeah, pants. I know, I, I know, what I'm talking about is the uh, material on the chest. Because the the waist is, I think, the same between the two costumes. Uh, however, I don't think it's just the same thing, because the cape doesn't... The, the cape seems to be longer like it was before... Obviously, he has the hood, and it seems more made out of what? Love the hood, by the way. And it seems more made out of cloth than well. Now that I think about it, the the one from the Last Jedi is that. God, it's really annoying finding photos that aren't just some stupid Halloween costume. Uh. Uh, but, like, he has that more scaly kind of armor. Uh, you can see ridges on it, especially in close-up shots. Mm -hmm. That doesn't seem to be on this one. It seems to be the more pitch-black, sleek armor from, uh, Force Awakens. Because, like, in, in The Last Jedi, he kind of has the, uh, the look from Force Awakens that's on his cowl, but on his chest now. Okay, I can see that. Um, and again, this is just reference photo. I'm, I'm go off. When I see the full thing, it'll be a lot easier to detail. Um, but yeah, um, kind of those new dude, duds, dudes, um, duds, looking good. I like the mix of Vader and kind of the Emperor with the hood on. Um. Jay will be Kylo's mask, as Possibly. rumored. Possibly. Well, I mean, 
I mean, it might not look exactly like this when we see it. Like, I don't know how bright the red's going to look. Um, oh, well, I just realized he's wearing the same... I might be wrong. He seems to be wearing something more similar uh, with the ridges and everything uh, than I thought. Does he... I swear he has a different, like, chest co uh, part of the costume uh, between films. Oh, yeah, because there's, there seems to be more of a flap, and I do think the chest piece is different. It's like the, uh, like, Vader's chain. Like, sometimes it's there, sometimes it's there. Um, Kylo, stop changing your outfit. You aren't your grandma. You don't need a, don't need a fashion change. Yeah, it, it does seem more separated. So, okay, I think he's just straight up wearing the same thing when he's in the TIE silencer. But then by the end of the film, he was wearing, like, an actual uh, armor with a chest piece and all of that. At least that's my assumption. Hmm. It gets a little confusing since it's always just pitch black. <laughs> but I don't think he's wearing the same costume. I could be wrong. But yeah, uh, point is, it, it, he has the mask back. Yep. He's trying, he glued it back together himself. Big boy. With lava. Exactly. Gotta be edgy. Uh, I bet it took him a long time. I bet it took him the whole year. Um, oh, and Jolta, what you were saying, uh, you can see his legs uh, in the shots when he's, like, looking at Vader's helmet. Yeah, yeah, I see it. So uh, he, I guess, can take off the shawl because it's behind him. Okay, I, I think I get what you're talking about now. I get it. Um, so I, I finally think we might understand what the heck is up with his outfit. Kylo's fashion choices. It's a lot of layers of the same color, but slightly different textures. Exactly. You gotta be edgy, man. Um, so, um, how do you guys feel about Kylo having his mask back? I've heard different opinions about it. Um, personally, I'm cool with it. I think it makes sense from a character and thematic standpoint. Like, you know, he shatters his mask in episode 8 when he's conflicted about what side he's on, and now he's fully embraced the dark side, so of course he put it back together. I think it makes sense. Unless, you know, JJ, like, side the backsteps that. I mean, never know. Uh, I mean, I've obviously, I have a feeling Kylo will be the main antagonist for at least the majority of the film. But um, whether or not he gets redeemed is a whole other discussion itself. But just in terms of the mask itself, I think it makes sense to bring it back. And just aesthetically, it looks really cool. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on that? I mean, it's would more unique to him now, and I think that's why he's going back to it. I like, like I, it's this okay. fractured, reformed uh, Vader kind of thing. So it isn't just a Vader wannabe mask. Yeah, it's his own. The mask of Ren. Um, <laughs> I like it, and also I. I just can't see First Order officers taking Kylo seriously without his mask on. Unless it's, he just has to choke him every five seconds, but even then I don't think he's going to get tired. Um, <laughs> the little baby face. Um, I also like the red aesthetic here. I, I really like that. I hope we see it in the movie. Like, I think... Is, is Jay just a painting or, like, an actual photo? I mean, either way, I'd assume it's in the movie, since it's what's straight up been talked about for months. <laughs> Probably. I'd be curious to see, like, what the finished product looks like. Um, but yeah. That's Kylo's mask. K, Poe. Looking good, looking sharp, looking sexy. <laughs> no longer in his pilot suit. Or jacket. Now just got that Indiana Jones look to him. I like Unfortunately, it. there's no beard. No, or hat, or Indiana Jones hat. Um, he would have made a good young in, uh, Indiana Jones Jr. Um, anyone want to comment on Poe? Just looking good. Looks good. Yeah. 
Um, okay, we'll, we'll probably skim through these next few ones. So, L's an alien. Kinda looks a little like an Authorian from a certain point of view, but not entirely, since the eyes are a little too narrow. We keep having, like, slightly farther away designed Ithorians. Because um, <laughs> TLJ had one that looked a lot like an Ithorian as well. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Um, M... We had a horn looking. Oh, let's see what what's M. I think he's resistance. Horn pilot. So probably uh, either my guess is resistance. Although maybe he's third faction. Just it looks says, like a really crazy Akachi. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like the horns though. It looks cool. Um, N just says new alien. Kind of looks like a Knight of Ren, but it's got a very creepy smile looking the helmet. Uh, that might be if uh. I mean, if the speculation about Carrie Russell being a bounty hunter is true, I could see that being one of her people. Yeah, um, I don't know why. Carrie, the face reminds me of Slender Man a little bit. I don't know, I've got that Slender look. Slender Man doesn't have a face, dude. I know, but it, it, it looks something out of a horror movie. Just the, the, the eyes and the smile. Um, or that just could be really bad rendering, so... At least in terms of creepypastas, I'd say he looks more like uh, Smiling Jack or something. Maybe. Um, and you guys have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Grinning Man. UFO yeah. thing, shows up at places, Men in Black thing. Yeah, dude, I used to be into that shit, I know. <laughs> um, and now for O, the big spoiler. Old Lando. Who's essentially just wearing Donald Glover's Lando costume, but with a longer cape. Um, I'm Going sure back to his classics. Red and I had a bit of a joke of, like, he kept the same cost outfit for 60-something years. I mean, it's Lando, so I could see him totally wanting to go retro again. Really? About 50 of the same costume. That's true. He, he borrowed Han's clothes in Empire Strikes Back. Um, yeah. Lando's not as uh, against fashion sense here. Um, look good. Looks cool. Oops, sorry, I missed that. Let me do that. Um, P, we have just new aliens in robes. I've seen these guys, I think, in like the Jordan suit, in the Jordan shoot. There was like a mock up, right? Like a standee that kind of looked like them? Yeah. Um, I have a weird theory that they might belong to the Church of the Force, because I want to see those. Dudes come back again. But they just... Like wills. Maybe. But they just could be nomads, for all we know, or just people who like robes. Uh, yeah. With all these new characters and what have you, it makes me wonder, how long is this movie going to be? I thought the yeah. same thing uh, when TLJ was coming up, and it really surprised me of, like, all of those aliens that we had... Even stuff that didn't seem to be on <coughs> Canto Bite, it all ended up just being aliens from Canto Bite. Like, Canto Bite is such a small part of the movie, but was like 80 freaking percent of the leaks. So I think that really taught me uh, you kind of, you can never fully judge how important that stuff's going to be. No, I agree. I, I predict it's going to be the usual two hours and 15 minutes. Oh, 15 minutes. I mean, I've heard certain things about this is a long script, but, you know, editing still has to happen and whatnot, so the final shoot is never whatever put on screen, from what I learned. And, uh, finally, Q is just a new alien. Um, <laughs> not much to say there. Okay. If we all still want to keep going, we can go into some of these, uh, cool little rumors we've been hearing about for the last couple of weeks. Some of which probably aren't true. Most likely. But they're still fun to speculate. So I'll read you the first little, uh, first big bullet point here. Episode 9, okay, here we go. Episode 9 will see Supreme Leader Kylo Ren assembling private armies and militia in order to fend off any opposition to his rule. However, he will find himself facing a new threat from the beyond, presumably either a place in the unknown regions, or maybe even a place from beyond the edges of the galaxy far, far away. Um, I added here... A threat from the beyond revealed itself, making Kylo Ren feel vulnerable. This threat would serve as a motivating factor for Kylo and Rey's interactions as the story progressed. But the source wasn't sure which act had happened or how it unfolded. Um, the source also said it was not a Yuzong Vong type threat. Sorry, Yuzong Vong fans will have to wait. 
Um, Knights of Ren are not from the Beyond, because apparently people thought the Knights of Ren were the threat from the Beyond. Okay, a lot to break down here. So the, the one part of this big rumor I actually do believe a good chunk of is the Militia part. Only because that was sort of hinted at at the Poe comic. And the Poe comics, despite how many would, how few people feel about them, they have hinted at certain tiny things for the sequel trilogy a little bit. A little bit like Poe's character. Um, they were, I think they were the first ones to hint that Snoke had a mobile command center, which I think would become the supremacy. Um, and of course, as of recently, the whole Poe needing to pick up BB-8, which led into Resistance. <laughs> and uh, Red and I, U of Five, we've talked a lot about Resistance, about how maybe the First Order is gonna take over the galaxy. Mm-hmm. Um, now, as for this Beyond stuff, so I'm just gonna come up front and say, I partly really just want it, because I have this whole, I want Palpatine to come back from the dead, and the dark side unknown region thing from Aftermath Empire's end to be a thing. I know it's probably not gonna happen. I know I'm probably just wishing for something that's never gonna happen, but a man can dream, dang it. it we act Snoke the way we do, <laughs> it would feel like so non-committal if we did another force heavy thing i really hope this is way more faction heavy yeah it's funny that another... i'm with red on this maybe but he's abrams and plus i think it would just be kind of cheap to have another big fret for kylo that i agree that i do agree snoke in half yeah. do we really need another snoke ask mysterious thing from the beyond like i get that abrams loves his mystery box but he has never actually opened the damn mystery box hmm. well the mystery box without it blowing up in his face that is yeah well, plus he makes no he makes other work. people open it yeah and plus i just don't want another repeat of return of the jedi's ending you know so i mean Again, whether or not whether or not you want Kylo to be redeemed or not, I really hope it doesn't ultimately end with Rey and Kylo teaming up again. You know. Exactly well, this problem. doesn't imply that though. No. They're just searching for the same MacGuffin, which is why the the Beyond thing is weird to me because it's a threat. Unless that was just a miscommunication and the person, the source didn't fully understand. That means yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think what like because. You guys familiar with the uh, Mur Talisman from Legends? No, it sounds familiar. It's the thing that creates the Rackle. Oh, yeah, that thing. That talisman. Mm -hmm. Old Sith had it. It was... Uh, what was that crossover called? Not Contagion. But, uh... Like that, where throughout the eras you had... You know, all the heroes and villains fighting to try and obtain this thing. Just something like that, because you can easily have some sort of threat that's not really a unifying force. It's just everyone's after it, because they want to obtain it. Mm. I'm trying to think what a good example would be Star Wars-wise. Uh, like Cortosis or something? N no, because Cortosis is enough threat in the dark Forge? Maybe, I guess, yeah, the Rakatan. Uh, you could argue the, uh, like, whatever they're called, Urish something. Grist? Uh, no, no. The, uh, the guy is from Belsavis. The dinosaur people? The Shurukid? The one? No, because okay. no, those were a unifying force. Oh, yeah, right. Um, the Siruk. Siruk, that's right. I just call them the dinosaur people. Ah, uh, the sea rook. Um, but no, I agree. Like the, the this beyond thing is like so vague. You don't even we don't even know. Um, Eshka, that's what I'm thinking of. The Eshka. They were an enemy of the Infinite Empire and were locked away. But yeah, like a uh, third party. They they keep saying MacGuffin. That does not necessarily mean anything. But at the same time. We have done so. We have done like nothing with the first order and the uh, and the resist resistance actually fighting. 
Like, we've really had an actual fight between them. It's been Resistance swoops by and just blows them up without taking any losses. Then Starkiller base, where everything feels empty and you don't really get a sense of push and pull. Then a ch- then the battle that goes very quickly at the beginning of Episode Eight, and we really only get push and pull with Poe. And then we get the whole on the run thing. And then they fire at Crate, but like literally, I don't think we see a single shot actually even hit. So it's like we 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 haven't had an actual fight. Can we please not do a MacGuffin or a search or secret plan mission kind of thing and just straight up actually have it be a war? I do like, think why- we are going to get a big battle though. Like there there are reports like of that jungle and that snow. Um, I've heard. <laughs> And you know, there's like you know, uh, John Boyega is talking about you know he had to do like some very heavy stunts. Um, I mean, that doesn't necessarily imply big battle, nor does it necessarily mean that's going to be a focus of the film. That's fair. Um, this beyond thing, I don't know if that would be a good pick. We've had so much in the way of get such and such MacGuffin kind of thing. I mean, that's what Solo was, or One was. That's what uh, Episode 7 was. Episode eight's the only one of the new films that isn't that. Got it. Yep. Um, well, I guess I can skip the second point, because that's essentially you just talked about the MacGuffin. Um, so Do you guys just... want to take any guesses at what the MacGuffin could possibly be? It just says MacGuffin is delightful but controversial, controversial in concept but not execution, and will not be set started and will not be searched for at the beginning of the film. I thought it was going to be like some sort of force sucking device that takes away your force powers. That's what my, that's what my poor uncreative mind goes to. So what do I know? What did you think it was, Doc? Um, I actually had a theory in regards to the whole. I, uh, in regards to the whole like controversial yet delightful thing, I was trying to think of things that would possibly be controversial, not in terms of like, you know, causing drama or something, but just maybe in terms of the universe and like bringing in certain things that we haven't brought in before. So a theory I have is that if there is a MacGuffin in the film, um, it could possibly be something like a holocron or like a, like an ancient like scroll or. Uh, something related to like those ancient Jedi texts that Luke had, or something, something that contains information valuable to the Jedi or some other Force sensitive group, possibly. Would that be controversial? I guess depending I on mean, what I said. Well, I, I mean, I think the point is the MacGuffin would come off as controversial at first to the fans. Yeah. I mean, I guess it could technically be controversial because we haven't had a holocron in one of the movies before. That would. That would not be controversial. That's yeah. just data storage. Like, they, they say controversial in concept. I, I feel like that is an implication of more than just, we have not seen this specific data storage. Like, the first time a floppy disk was used in James Bond, that was not a controversial thing, just because it was a new data format. <laughs> Uh, uh, who knows? I mean, how do you know? Were you there, mister? Um, these new dang fangled devices. Um, maybe it's an uncompleted third Death Star in the Maw that's just the laser and the outline. Maybe. Well, they're gonna, the first door is going to steal it and use it. Um, and then, Maybe this is how Richard E. Grant's character comes into play. It's a clone of Tarkin. Oh, it's, shit. What if it is a clone? Or, like... Don't start with your Palpatine thing, but what if it's, like, some genetic material? I mean, I've heard a wild rumor, which I don't necessarily believe, but, you know, hey, let's go for it. That's Luke's hand, and we're bringing in Luke. Ooh! Even if it doesn't have to be Luke, I I would love it if it is Luke's hand. Hmm. Or if it's, or, you know what I was actually thinking earlier is, what if it was Vader's lightsaber? I've heard about that one, too. Because we had the whole might have been destroyed and sent, you know... It was pretty destroyed to me. A lightsaber? I mean, it's split in half. Vader's. Yeah. Vader didn't split in half, did, did it? No, Vader's didn't. 
That was another rumor, by the way, that Luke's lightsaber might be rebuilt. Well, Vader's got Vader's hand got cut. His lightsaber's fine. Oh, sorry, I was confusing Vader and Luke's lightsaber. Sorry. Uh, that's why I said Vader. Uh, Vader's lightsaber, which we set up at the whole Acolyte of the Beyond, all of that stuff that might actually be a part of something. What if they actually had acquired the lightsaber and destroyed it? like they they did in uh, Aftermath. And so the controversial thing is like between realms, physical something. We got the world between worlds. It exists, people. And the Vader comics was doing some weird between realms stuff, too. Like just the idea of like trying to obtain a weapon that's maybe been imbued from the other side... Mm-hmm. Or maybe even just the actual lightsaber being hidden. Like, it, it could be an artifact that's important simply as, like... I, I, but again, would it be interesting enough if it's just a weapon with a controversial... Like, if it had the, the Acolytes of the Beyond and was, like, a whole connection to the other side, then I could buy it. But if not, then it wouldn't really make sense. I could see it being. I really like hand, the though. idea of uh, Luke's hand. I think that's a cool idea. Um, do we see Luke's hand disappear with him at the end of Last Jedi? I forgot. What do you mean? Uh, Luke's like mechanical hand. Does it disappear with him, or? I, I think so, but I, that's not what we're. That's not what Joel's talking about. Oh, I'm talking He's... about his flesh hand from Empire. Yeah, <laughs> we're not talking about the robot hand. Oh. We're talking about the biological one, the the, the thing that got severed. Huh. And my real question is, that is, be... is that hand now just all bony? Like, I'm sure it's dec- decayed. Yeah, it's, it's Star Wars. You put it in a tank. I mean, dude, we have, like, it's only been, like, 30 years. We have people who have not been in tanks whose bodies have been preserved for longer. That's fair. Freaking Lennon. That's true. Uh, well, he got embalmed, to be fair. <laughs> Luke didn't... Well, yeah, but you could embalm the disembodied hand or put it in a jar or just on some ice. That's true. Although, who would do that? A weird, I, a weird I, guy in a lot of... Oh, sorry, who? Who was the... Dude, there's a guy IRL who was important in, like, germ theory. Or not germ theory, but I'm forgetting who exactly it was, but... Like, what do you call it? The study of diseases? Um, what was it? Study of diseases. Study of diseases. Oh, epidemiologists. Uh, 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 they were, like, one of the prevalent epi- epidemiologists, like, donate, had his body donated to be, uh, done as a pub as like a dissection for a college course for his friend to do uh when he died and then his body got embalmed and he wanted his body to be propped up uh and attend all the meetings at his college he taught at oh dang that guy it's really weird and the whole it's don't look it up oh i i I actually have legit fancy a theory for luke's hand okay this is legit uh so my theory is Kylo can't get over the fact he never got to have his little... He never got to get back at Luke because, you know, Luke totally owned him at crate. You know, yeah, he could swing him, but, you know, he never got to actually hurt Luke. And does Kylo know Luke's dead? The thing disappears, so I think maybe he presumes yes. Maybe. But maybe Kylo doesn't know, or maybe Kylo thinks there's a way to get back at Luke still. So, what if Kylo goes looking for Luke's hand and tries to use it as some sort of sacrifice thingy to, like, open the door of the world between, of do the spirit world, so he can get some revenge on Luke, and that's where things go downhill for him. Because you're messing with forces. I mean, that's presuming we introduce that. I think... There, I, my idea is also, yeah, that there's a tether, but I don't know if they necessarily introduce the world between worlds exactly. Like, I don't think we'd go there, but I think we'd have just kind of a touching upon of 
it doesn't have to be the world between worlds exactly as we see it in Rebels. It can just be spirit. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, to just re- bridging, that, bridging that gap, not necessarily entering it. Exactly. Like, just have, you know, maybe he wants to, maybe they want to contact Luke. For some reason, maybe they need some information. Who knows? I mean, hell, maybe it has to do with activating that shrine underneath the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. Maybe. Uh, JJ and Terrio, get on it. Um, there's your idea, JJ and Terrio. Um, I, I honestly do think it could be Luke's hand. Uh, that was an old idea that almost went through. Can I remember one? Yeah. It was one of the earlier ideas was, you know, show Luke's hand, just fall. Um, There's space somehow. Exactly. So um, I can see them honestly going back to that. Um, so that's enough about the MacGuffin. Um, and let's uh, get to... Zilla, you have any thoughts on this? Uh, no, you guys have pretty much been saying uh, all, like uh, what I've been thinking, so... Okay. <laughs> So, here's something a bit more somewhat concrete, um, or well, at least maybe not concrete, but definitely something I've been hearing a lot about. Um, Knights of Ren are said to be, are being told to be in the film, and apparently they will have weapons way more elaborate than the ones they had in TFA, and apparently they will also have red and black stormtroopers that personally obey them and Kylo, and some Knights of Ren have force powers, while others do not. Hmm. Um, I believe this one. I, just, I really mm-hmm. think the Knights of Ren are going to be in this film. Mm. Uh, and now I'm excited because I want to see these guys before it ends. Just sort of see what they're like. Um, and It makes it, me wonder how much time we're going to devote to them considering the big cast we have already. Well, like, the they, big, just, they could be a major part of that cast. Mm. As long as you get yeah, some good I mean, actors, you know, like they can be memorable even if they don't actually get like in depth. Yeah, I'm just wondering, are they just going to be like the Praetorian Guards, or are they going to actually get like dialogue and stuff? I mean, Phasma is a perfect example. Maybe they're a bit more than Phasma, to be fair. Um, well, yeah, but if you have, you know, like two or three Phasmas, that's enough. That's true. I mean, I mean, you got, uh, that like, almost the... equals half a character. Exactly. I mean, I got like the pretty one and then the gruff one. The charming one, the snarky one. Um, I'm describing. Kylo the- Ren and the Seven Knights, or I was trying to think of a pun with dwarf, but I couldn't think of one. Kylo and the Knights of Ren. Um, yeah, it's Kylo's boy band, or just band. There could be some girls in there too. That's how it's gonna go down. Just watch every rock movie that always goes downhill, and that will describe Kylo's arc in Episode Nine perfectly. Um. All right. Um, I think the definition of okay, we're they, there are troopers who specifically obey them is gonna play into the existence of Richard Grant's character. You think so? Yeah. I mean, if we're establishing a new first order guy, uh, I would have assume... like first order death troopers or something. Well, no, I mean these guys if they're specifically loyal to Bren. Hmm. So you're, like, thinking Richard Grant's, like, their commander? Or no. You... Like, if, if you're setting that up as they are specifically the ones loyal to them, that doesn't necessarily mean anything unless you have someone who would uh, oppose from within. That's true. Um, like, the Praetorian Guards and even the Red Guards exist narratively in order to kind of be that. I mean, obviously, the... Uh, Red Guards get cut, but that was their point in Return of the Jedi, was those deleted scenes with them, like, straight up pulling their blades on Vader. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so maybe Richard E. Grant's character would have more interaction with Hux, then. Hmm. Like, Hux wants to get rid of Kylo, and he needs Richard E. Grant's help, and then once they're gone, you know, Richard E. Grant's gonna pull the rug under from Hux, and he's like, I'm probably smarter. I am wondering how big of a role Hux is going to play in this, considering how many villains we're bringing in from the looks of it. I mean, two? I heard a weird rumor. It's not on this list, but I'll, I'll, I'll point it in because I, I don't believe it. But it's like, I, I heard a weird rumor that like Hux is going to get captured 
and sell Kylo out or something. Um, that's just a, that's not on this list or anything. That's just something I've heard randomly while looking up stuff online because I like doing that. TLJ had like six, arguably seven villains, and that's not including Canada and Phoebe. Yeah, DJ. Uh, DJ, Kylo, Snoke, Hux, Phasma, and arguably Holdo. Well, Holdo, uh, antagonist, then, if we're going to use that term. Well, yeah, but in terms of the villains uh, for the piece that we thought about going in... Oh, yeah, that's true. Because for... Because... Oh, yeah. Keep in mind, she's not the antagonist exactly until the end. Or, uh, like... She is portrayed as villainous and in opposition to Poe throughout. So in that respect, you could possibly lump Luke into that category as well? It, to a point, but Luke is kind of his own arc. Holdo is from without. That's fair. Um, I, I always forget. It's so weird thinking of Holdo now. It's like, I love her so much. Um, but it's like, yeah, so I don't, I don't think there's really a problem with Hux, given thus far we only really have two villains and then the Knights of Ren. Right. Since we had more villains and antagonists and people who served as villains for plot purposes than there were even antagonists in The Last Jedi. That's true. Because, um, I mean, Holdo and DAC both serve as as antagonists uh you could argue DJ doesn't and then does. Like, I don't know. It wouldn't be that weird. Yeah, there's a lot of characters. Um, so just a few other things. Nothing about the shape of anything we've heard so far. That kind of gives me the impression he might not be in this one, which is huh? kind of sad. Who? Uh, DJ. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know if there'd necessarily be a reason for him to be in here. I would love I mean, it. Sad because I enjoyed his character a lot, but I mean, I mean sure. I would want it just for fan service reasons, not for like a story purpose. Um, I mean, I enjoyed Doctor Evazon, but we didn't get him at Empire. I know that's and I'm sad. I'm not bitter. <laughs> you keep saying, yeah, you keep telling yourself that, Rich. Keep telling yourself that. Um, okay. well, they're giving stuff new in the Afro comics, so it's good. He should have been an Empire. Yeah. Um, he should have turned out to be Boba. Maybe he was. They could totally wreck on that. I buy it. Um, I mean, they did that in Legends with the whole. They did that in Legends with the whole thing with uh, what's his name, Jodo cast. Anytime Boba like showed up when canonically it didn't make sense, uh, or when he was just a total wimp, they retconned that it was this little shit who kept who was using rip-off Boba armor and took jobs pretending to be him. So Boba finally tracked him down and, like, burned him to death and shot him point-blank in the head. That's amazing. The, the Jodo cost is just a great story. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, well, okay, we have, we have stuff that doesn't make sense. Okay, let's make that into just this anti-Boba Fett who will get utterly butchered. <laughs> I like it. Um... Speaking of Empire, um, a little bit of Blando. It said he's not going to have a really large role in the story. He supposedly he acts as a Maz Kanata type character that points the way for the hero to obtain that MacGuffin. From what sources have said, it sounds like Billy D. Williams will wear his yellow shirt. We kind of already know this, blah, blah. Um, he's also going to have a fancy blue cape and gentleman's cane. I love cane. Gentleman's cane. What? <laughs> gentleman's cane. Gentleman's cane. I love Kane, Gentleman's Kane. They're so cool. Uh, uh, it is, it, that's a very polite word for it. Uh, oh. It's a Kane. Okay. Um, yes. Um, I will, I will be curious to see where Lando winds up in episode 9. Um, what, what sort of business ventures he will have. What is Maz? Is Maz going to even be in this? Uh, she was in the cast listing, so. So what exactly, I mean, if that role is taken over by... Might have had a deleted scene with Leia from Force Awakens. But she did, we know that for sure. 
remember it's in the trailers. She hold, yeah. she hands Leia the lightsaber. So yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. Just a few other little things. There's gonna be a funny three PO scene with him holding a bunch of Chewie's bowcast. I spelled some of this wrong. I'm sorry. Um, Chewie's band holder, bowcaster, and race staff. Oh, that no, that's a no. You spelled it correctly. It's a oh, bandolier. Bandolier. Okay. I think I copied and pasted some of this stuff. Okay, good, good. Um, there's a scene apparently rumors that Ray's gonna have some deleted footage with Carrie. Could be flashback, could be just refigured scene. Well, that mean they say she fits into the deleted footage from TFA. Yeah, so... There's nothing indicating that she was in that initial footage. We know, uh, I keep saying it's probably the Corey stuff. Okay, um, that's... Works out. And the last thing I just put here, just because I thought it was kind of interesting, but nothing too significant, is that Matt Smith's character is being kept under wraps, very secretive. So no one's heard of what Matt Smith is up to. What's what's it, it makes sense that they're gonna manipulate us and not tell us full truths about who he is. Um, yeah, you and know, it's role number one. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is that you may not even have like a big role. Like I, you have to remember that some of these actors in these two, past two movies have not had huge roles. That's true. You um, could be voice that droid that's going to annoy BB-8 for only now. That was my theory. That's that's, <laughs> that's a good theory. Um, bb eight just followed around by this Matt Smith the movie. So those were the rumors I wanted to get through. Do you guys want to do the other two, or do you want to just wrap it up? I'm, I'm good either way, honestly. Um... Because these were the ones, like, I read, the, the ones on top I really wanted to get through. The whole conference thing that I heard and the stuff from Reddit that was uh, reported yesterday, that wasn't really... There's nothing substantial to them is the thing. Yeah. Um, and we're, we're going for a good hour, so we've gotten some good stuff here. Okay. <clears throat> that was some fun spoiler speculation, people. Um, but before we go, I have one more little thing I want to do with everyone. So, round robin... Make just one random prediction for episode nine. It could be anything you want. Just predict anything. Have fun. And see if it happens. And I'm gonna write these down so um we can remember for when it's time. So, Red, we'll start with you. What's your one random prediction? My random prediction is that when they're doing all the stuff with the space horses. Mm-hmm. Finn will once again drink out of a water bowl okay. that, all, that an animal was eating out of. Okay, drink drinking out of. Out of water bowl that animal was drinking out of. DPZ, what about you? What is your one random episode 9 prediction? Uh, Kaz will show up in live action and fulfill his sex schedule. Okay. Yes. I'll just put live action Kaz and put in parentheses Sex schedule. Uh, we have that set photo from the final day of shooting with everyone hugging. <laughs> Kaz is in the middle. You just can't see him. Exactly. <laughs> um, Doc, what about you? What's your one random prediction? At some point, someone will say, that's a wizard. That's a wizard. Okay. And mine? I'm just going to go with my big one. I think Palpatine's going to show up in the film. I don't know why, but he will. Um, I want it. Um, okay, so I'm going to keep these here, and if I remember to come back to this, which I hope I do, uh, we will see in good less than ten, less than ten probably by now, months time, if we were correct. So thank you everyone for listening to our spoiler speculation, I hope you enjoyed it, leave your thoughts and spoiler speculations in the comments below. Until next time, may the Force be with you. Always. Hang on.